Well, I mean, I think everybody in this business needs to understand that our species has been grossly underempowered. So I hope that everybody using AI is really out there to empower creativity, empower learning, empower outcomes, empower social change, empower social progress. Uh, otherwise, why are we even here? Why are we doing any of this? Hey, Michael Crow here. What's up? Hey there, Michael. It's great to connect with you. So I'm curious, with all the innovations happening at Arizona State University, what's one recent change or project you're particularly excited about? You know, the things that excite me the most are those things which enable individual learners to learn in their own way. So we've got this cool way that we teach biology using a virtual reality technology that changes the way that people conceptualize biological systems and it really breaks down the old you know, listen to the master teacher in one particular way and think that that's the way that you're going to learn because that doesn't really work. So I'm really excited about the ways in which we've been able to enhance learning at the leading edge. That sounds incredible. Virtual reality can really open up a whole new world of education. Speaking of technology transforming learning, where do you see AI playing a role in these educational advancements at ASU? Well, we have thousands of AI projects that are in the works, and where I think this is all headed is that we're, for the first time in our species history, we're going to break down the rigidity of learning systems, which have been extremely elitist for the last several thousand years, in which only a few people have been designated as master learners, when in fact every person is a master learner. I know this from my own use of the AI systems the last couple of years, which is in the order of magnitude of thousands of interactions. And what I can find is that uh, I've even found ways to accelerate my own learning, to customize my own learning, give that to a younger person than me, make that happen in a really important way. And I think that we're going to see AI being this historical moment in our species history where everyone will have the opportunity to become a master learner. That's a fascinating vision. It's exciting to think about how these AI learning companions could balance personalization with broader educational goals. Switching gears a bit, if you had to choose one book that you recommend to everyone for expanding their perspective, what would it be and why? Well, you know, one book is kind of a silly question. Uh, you know, I think I've probably listened to or read I don't know, in the last four years, 300 books. And so, and that's no, no joke. And I would say that half of them were meaningful to altering what I presently thought. So in the fantastic story uh, called Hail Mary, uh, the Earth is threatened by an astrophage, a biological organism which is blocking photons from the sun reaching the Earth. And we decide as a species that we're gonna head out and find other possible species on other unknown planets that are also experiencing the astrophage capture of the photons. It's a pretty good story. It's a fantastic story. Where do you think the concept of astrophage came from as a photon capturing uh, space object capable of blocking photons reaching the Earth from the Sun? And don't say that it was just made up in somebody's brain because it's all biologically and physically possible. You know, what, what's the probability of these kinds of things? The concept of an astrophage in a story like Project Hail Mary is fascinating and aligns with speculative science fiction that pushes the boundaries of what we know. While no astrophage-like organisms have been discovered, the idea taps into real scientific discussions about extremophiles, organisms that thrive in extreme conditions on Earth. Theoretical discussions around finding life forms with unusual metabolic processes or energy acquisition methods could have inspired the concept Regarding probabilities, they remain speculative without empirical evidence, as the limitations of our current biological understanding and the lack of observable astrophages leave them hypothetical. Science fiction often imagines possibilities to inspire and stretch our understanding, blending known science with creative thinking. Now for a little fun twist. If you could have dinner with one historical figure, who would it be and what's one question you'd love to ask them? There's one person, uh, Frederick Douglass, who uh, has amazed me in all my life that I've read about him, which started when I was about 10 years old, and that is, how did he go from being a slave to escaping, to being taught reading under penalty of death, to becoming one of the greatest writers, orators, and thinkers in the history of American democratic thought? And I just would love to sit with this guy and actually get a sense of who he is, who he was, 
how he thought, how he came about these thoughts, how he evolved, because he really uh, triggers in me this notion of the innate ability of a human. Uh, so he wasn't formally educated in any particular way other than being taught illegally how to read. The sense that I have then is that in him was then an empowerment that was enabled in some way. And if I could understand a person like him better, uh, I think I would be a better educator. Frederick Douglass is indeed a monumental figure with such an inspiring journey. Understanding his perspective on self-learning and resilience could be a goldmine for anyone in education. Speaking of education, let's flip it a bit. If you woke up tomorrow with a new super skill or talent, what would you want it to be and why? You know, the super skill for me is, you know, how do you explain things better so that more people can understand things across the breadth of our society? We're really breaking down now where groups and factions and subgroups and subfactions can't understand each other. So what we need is a way to translate from uh, one group to another group from one perspective to another perspective, from one historical lineage to another historical lineage. If we can figure out how to do that, uh, we're going to have an easier time moving forward than we're presently having. That's such a vital skill and it's essentially bridging divides through communication and empathy. It'd be like having the ability to build connective threads across diverse backgrounds. Keeping it light as we wrap up, what's a hobby or pastime you've picked up recently that brings you joy? Well, I mean, I, I hike uh, constantly into new places and uh, the joy that I get from being in a place where very few humans have been and is just really quite remarkable. It's not new, uh, but it is uh, one that still gives me joy and I keep looking to expand it in every way. Hiking sure sounds awesome and a great way to stay grounded while exploring the mysteries of nature. Before we close, any final thoughts or parting words you'd like to share on the future of education or technology? Well, well, I mean, I think everybody in this business needs to understand that our species has been grossly underempowered. So I hope that everybody using AI is really out there to empower creativity, empower learning, empower outcomes, empower social change, empower social progress. Uh, otherwise, why are we even here? Why are we doing any of this? Wow, there's some serious food for thought there, Michael. Thanks a ton for this amazing chat. It's been truly enlightening. Here's to a future filled with endless possibilities for all. Take care.